The Rings of Power is finally airing on Amazon, and the fan base are going crazy for it. The series was set to change a few things early on that affect the overall story of Lord of the Rings. We didn't know what this was going to be, but we had it finally revealed to us recently. So stay tuned to today's video as we discuss how Rings of Power changed everything. First up, Rings of Power fixed Peter Jackson's most iconic mistake. One of the biggest mistakes within Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy comes from In the Two Towers. In that film, they famously defied all logic by implying that orcs knew about menus as well as restaurants. Though it's a very funny gag during the film, it's definitely easy to explain away if you don't feel like getting bogged down within nerdy arguments within the community. However, it also reveals how Peter Jackson's orcs are largely used in some form of comedic effect. Just 20 years later, Amazon's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, is now setting the record straight as orcs aren't just badass, they're now downright terrifying. What the Lord of the Rings got wrong about the orcs. Just as J.R.R. Tolkien imagined them, orcs within mythical worlds are meant to be scary. Orcs are as violent as they are sadistic. They can be cruel, and everything they hate is good to the rest of the world. They also love torturing their enemies, and are even some of the strongest beings within Middle-earth. However, the Lord of the Rings movies made the orcs basically fodder for the good guys to cut through within battle. Orcs fall by the dozen under Aragorn's sword, Gimli's axe, and Legolas's bow. They're funnier than they are scary, as they're easily tricked and are more often than not used for some form of comedic effect. The existence of the Uruk-hai within Lord of the Rings also makes the regular orcs look weak by its comparison. This obviously is not Peter Jackson's fault, but the fact that there was no uruk -hai in Rings of Power does give the show an awesomely surprising advantage. From the very beginning, the orcs within the Rings of Power are much more intimidating than their Lord of the Rings counterparts. If a regular human within Middle-earth fought against or stares down a single orc, it's going to be terrifying. We see this within Episode 1, when Bronwyn tries to fight one on her own and gets tossed aside just like a ragdoll. Throughout the series, we also see the orcs easily overpower most of the humans they come across. Even an elf like Arendir struggles to fight against them at multiple times in the series. Around the episode 5 mark, the Rings of Power is clearly building up to a major confrontation between the Orc army and the defiant humans of the Southlands. The battle is set to take place in a fortified old watchtower, and the Helm's Deep parallels are so obvious. However, unlike the two towers, Amazon's Rings of Power does not need uruk -hai and a bunch of gunpowder to raise the stakes of the fight. The strength of these orcs alone is more than enough to strike fear into the heart of the humans of Middle-earth and even the audience watching the series at home. It's awesome to see Middle-earth orcs finally be terrifying, as throughout the Lord of the Rings, they would just be used for comedic effect. In multiple different mediums, orcs are seen as terrifying beasts. They battle en masse, and they fight to the death with anything in their way. Though in some media, they're definitely used as jokes, they're still super strong in basically everything. Anything fantasy-based, orcs are there, and they're always ready for a fight. Just look at something like Warhammer 40,000. They strike the perfect balance between funny-looking orcs with goofy abilities and then being insanely strong and intimidating. Within that game, the orcs are very random and have a lot of funny things to them. Their gameplay mechanics are suited to this as they're very random and very fun to play. However, when the game goes right for you, or completely terrifying, and can stomp the game easily. The models themselves within the game are very creepy, but also have a comedic aspect to them. This is the perfect balance for orcs and something that the Lord of the Rings needed to learn from. It seems like the Rings of Power finally made orcs a terrifying force within Middle-earth and Peter Jackson's world. We can't wait to see what else happens in the Rings of Power and how the orcs against the humans finally goes down. And that's all we have from this section of the video. Please let us know down in the comments section below your thoughts on how the Rings of Power is finally treating orcs with some respect. Also, let us know how you felt about the original use of orcs within the Lord of the Rings and how it compares to the Rings of Power. And now, on to some other television news to wrap up today's video. Next up, here's a wrap-up of the latest Marvel television news. The next piece of information we're going to talk about in today's video is a wrap-up of all of the latest Marvel news as the studio have swapped a few things around and even added one of the biggest stars to its cast. There's been a change in the air for Marvel recently as the MCU's longest Disney Plus series has finally been plugged, but there's some silver lining to the news. The franchise also recently landed one of its biggest stars ever in a hugely shocking recast. If all of the latest rumors are to be believed, let's get into the latest Marvel news roundup for the end of today's video. Video. Armor Wars Lives to Rise as a movie. Apple has been trying to get an Armor Wars series off the ground for quite a while now, starring Don Cheadle as War Machine. However, with the recent announcement, they finally decided to throw in the towel. Many fans were scared about Armor Wars, as it wasn't 
wasn't recently featured during the last Marvel lineup. Multiple other projects weren't either, and we still don't have information on those. Though Armor Wars wasn't shown off in the latest Marvel TV panel, it was later announced that the project would be rebooted as a movie instead. Though the original news is pretty sad, fans are now going crazy over this news, as the excitement that the MCU's longest-serving sidekick is finally getting his own movie is kicking in. Armor Wars being bumped up to the big screen to accommodate a secret role for Robert Downey Jr. is also most likely happening, so we hope that this occurs soon. Though we don't see Tony Stark coming back in full, we will most likely see some form of flashback between War Machine and Tony Stark. This would be an awesome callback for fans, and we can't wait to see Armor Wars when it finally releases on the big screen of all places. Harrison Ford joins the Thunderbolts as General Ross. One of the biggest pieces of news throughout this year was that the Thunderbolts movie is finally happening. However, much to the disappointment of fans of the comics, the team was missing Red Hulk. This was very understandable though, as the actor for General Ross, William Hurt, passed away earlier this year. Many fans were expecting Marvel to just leave the character behind, but it seems like they've already cast a big-name replacement for the role. According to leaks, this is none other than industry veteran Harrison Ford. Apparently, his casting was all set to be revealed during Disney Expo this year, but Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy did not want to upstage his comeback as Indiana Jones for the next movie. We're excited to see them finally officially announce the appearance of Harrison Ford within Thunderbolts, but we have no idea when it's going to happen. She-Hulk is a certified fresh series. Tatiana Maslany's Jennifer Walters might have trolls gunning for her both off screen and on, but in a big and well-deserved win, the series has managed to defeat its detractors and smash its way to a certified fresh score on Rotten Tomatoes. In the wake of the Disney Plus show reaching its seventh episode, just two more to go, She-Hulk is sitting pretty at a sensational 87% on the review aggregation site. And that's before we've even had the big Daredevil crossover. Way to go, Miss Walters. Finally, Blade is going back in time? Blade might be currently directorless, although fans have their hearts set on Spike Lee stepping into the helm. Some new rumored plot details offer us a taste of what we can expect when Mahershala Ali's rebooted Daywalker finally slays his way into the MCU. Apparently, the new Blade film is set to be a period piece, covering eight decades between 1900 and 1980. So expect a deep dive into Marvel's horror lore that will hopefully explain why we've never seen vamps in the franchise until now. And that's the end of today's video. Hopefully, you enjoyed this latest video. If you did, would you please let us know down in the comments section below? That would be very helpful. Make sure to like the video, comment down below, and of course, subscribe to the channel with the notification bell rung. Thank you for watching today's video. Bye.